Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're pretending. We're pretending that it's December 13th, 2022 again, and the Radeon RX 7900 XT is being released for the first time. But this time, with nine months of driver development and $150 US slashed off the MSRP. Oh, and the GeForce RTX 4060 series and RX 7600 series have also been released, but you don't need to worry about that. The point is, the 7900 XT released with driver-related performance issues that was seen in a few of the games that we test with, and then there's the $900 US MSRP. Now, the MSRP is still $900 US, but there's generally at least one model available for $750 US, with multiple models priced below $800 US. And that being the case, we felt a re-review was in order to see just how much better the day one 7900 XT reviews could have been. But before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Skytech Gaming and their collaboration with Intel and Signal RGB to create a Diablo 4 inspired PC, which we're given away to one lucky gamer. This one of a kind masterpiece features swirling potions that react with your health and resources in real time. This is made possible by the Signal RGB app, which synchronizes RGB devices from any brand to bring you a cohesive lighting experience. The hand-painted chest also contains a 13th gen Intel Core i5 13600K and GeForce RTX 4070. So to enter the giveaway, click the link in the video description. Okay, so this isn't going to be a full top-down review as not everything has changed in regards to the Radeon RX 7900 XT. So we'll look at the games that have seen performance improvements, a few that haven't, and then the 15 game average. And then from all of that, we will recalculate our cost per frame data. Now, on hand for testing, I have a couple of Radeon RX 7900 XTs that I've not looked at before, and some of these models have been available for $750 US over the past few weeks. And one such model is the Sapphire Pulse, which dropped down as low as $720 midway through July, and has been $100 below the MSRP since March of this year. And at the time of making this video, it's priced at $770 US, but I do expect to see that $750 US price or lower return in the not too distant future. Also on hand is the ASRock Phantom Gaming, which currently sits at $780 US, but again, did drop as low as $720 US last month and has been priced at $800 or lower since March of this year. Then we have the MSI Gaming Trio Classic, which is a pretty difficult model to come by and currently it isn't being sold at Newegg. That's not to say though that Newegg's never sold it. They have sold this model in the past for $780 US, at least that was the lowest price that they've sold it for. So this MSI model hasn't hit the rock bottom prices that we've seen from ASRock and Sapphire. It is also worth noting that MSI was pretty slow with their 7900 series, releasing their custom models a few months late. So this has likely influenced the pricing. Now, for testing, we're using our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system using 32GB of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory with the latest display drivers. Speaking of display drivers though, the 7900XT will be compared with our day one review driver with the latest driver to see how much progress AMD has made on the driver front over the past nine months. So let's get into it. First up, we have The Last of Us Part 1, and here AMD has made some improvements, boosting performance at 1080p by 14%. It's also great to see a 19% improvement over the 6950 XT, and although that's still well under what AMD were targeting, it is much better than the 4% improvement we saw previously. That margin though is reduced to 11% at 1440p, taking the average frame rate from 89 FPS with the old driver to 99 FPS with the new driver. So it's still a nice game, but it's not quite as impressive as what we saw at 1080p. Then at 4K, we're only seeing an 8% uplift for the newer driver, but with the 4070 Ti falling away at this higher resolution, that does hand the 7900 XT a rather large 21% performance advantage. Okay, moving on to Resident Evil 4, and here we're seeing no performance improvement with the latest driver, and I have to say this is pretty typical from our 15 game sample. Even as we increase the resolution, there is no performance improvement, resulting in the same 155 FPS at 1440p and 92 FPS at 4K. And again, this sort of result is fairly typical when comparing the release driver with the latest driver in a wide range of games. 
Now, the only other game besides The Last of Us Part 1 to show big performance gains with the new driver, or really any performance improvement, is Forza Horizon 5. Here, the latest driver improved the 7900 XT's performance by 19% at 1080p, allowing it to just edge out the 4070 Ti by a mere 5% margin. Still, that's a great improvement given what we saw previously, and well, previously it was slower than the 6950 XT, so certainly a nice performance injection there for RDNA 3. Sadly though, the margin is greatly reduced at 1440p, and now the latest driver is only offering a 12% boost, which admittedly, that's still a nice uplift, but it's also quite a bit less when compared to what we saw at 1080p. Finally, at 4K, we're only looking at a 4% performance boost, but that was enough to basically match the 6950 XT, so not an amazing result at this extreme resolution, but a much needed improvement all the same. Okay, so the F122 benchmark, that only saw very minor performance improvements at 1080p. Basically, within the margin of error, we're seeing just a 2% increase for the average frame rate. Then at 1440p, we're looking at less than a 2% increase, going from 118 FPS to 120 FPS, and then out to a 3% increase at 4K. Though, it is worth mentioning that the 1% lows saw a more notable 7% increase, and this was fairly consistent throughout the F122 testing. Now. Here's a look at the 15 game average data, starting with the 1080p numbers. So as I said, just two games saw big performance gains with nothing much happening for the other 13 games. And as a result, overall performance was boosted by just 3% at 1080p. That will certainly help the 7900 XT, but in terms of overall performance, it's hardly a game changer. Then at 1440p, the margin is reduced to just 3%, taking the overall frame rate from 135 FPS to 139 FPS. So while it is nice to see any kind of performance improvement, it's not exactly that meaningful for the 1700 XT's overall performance. And then finally at 4K, we're also only looking at a 3% boost overall, so nothing to write home about. And therefore, I think it's best that we just move on to the cost per frame analysis. And we'll start with the cost per frame data based on the manufacturer's suggested retail pricing figures. At the still official MSRP of $900 US, the 7900 XT is a complete joke, offering the same cost per frame as previous generation parts that were also poor value upon release, such as the $330 US RX 6600. In my opinion, you'd ideally want a part such as the 7900 XT offering at least 15% better value than the RX 6800, but at the $900 MSRP, it actually ended up being 7% more expensive. Had AMD released the 7900 XT at $750 US, it would have been 13% cheaper than the RX 6800, and that's significantly closer to where I think it should be. Basically, as I alluded to in my previous content, this product really should have cost $700 US, but $750 is certainly a massive improvement from $900. Of course, the problem all current generation GPUs face is a massive surplus of previous generation GPUs. Even today, the 6950XT can still be had for as little as $640 US, which makes a $900 7900XT utterly useless. But at $750 US, if you're in the market for a high-end GPU, you'd surely pay the small premium for the 7900 XT. It's very likely going to age better with future driver development, and it has a little bit more VRAM for good measure. It also beats out the 4070 Ti, which costs $800 US. There is just no way frame generation is worth paying a 16% premium for most gamers. And of course, if you happen to play competitive multiplayer titles, then frame generation is completely worthless. And in my opinion, surely that 20 gigabyte VRAM buffer offered by the 7900 XT is a significantly greater draw card, given the 4070 Ti only has 12 gigabytes. But of course, let me know what you think about that in the comments section below. And then finally, I'll just quickly touch on power usage, not that anything's really changed here, and we are looking at total system figures. When compared to the 4070 Ti, total system usage in Hitman 3 was increased by 9%, and both GPUs did produce the same frame rate in this game, so the 4070 Ti is certainly more efficient, but as we see in this example, there's not always a lot in it. That said, when looking at Spider-Man Remastered, we see that the 7900 XT did push total system usage 25% higher, though it was 7% faster. So again, the GeForce GPU, it's certainly more efficient, but the difference isn't always going to be that significant. 
So there you have it, what could have been for our day one 7900 XT review. And speaking of which, I did conclude my review nine months ago by saying this GPU needed to cost no more than $750 US. That was the absolute highest price I could see a 7900 XT making sense. And nine months later, that appears to be as true as ever. And thankfully, now it is possible to purchase a 7900 XT at that price. Well, I suppose depending on the pricing in your region. But when I was starting to piece this video together, a week or so before its release, the Sapphire Pulse version was available at $750 US over at Newegg.com, though it is back up to $770 as of the 1st of August. The Power Color Hellhound is also often available at $750, and at the time of making this video, it currently is, though most other models are up around $770 to $790. So, the 7900 XT, it isn't always available at $750 US, and without an official price cut, pricing will continue to be all over the place. But you should absolutely be on the lookout for deals, as they do regularly pop up. Now, as nice as the massively improved performance in Forza Horizon 5 and The Last of Us Part 1 is, overall, the 7900 XT isn't much faster today than it was nine months ago when we tested it for the first time. So while the improved performance in a few select tiles is certainly very nice, it's not a massive factor here. And in fact, the biggest factor is the heavily discounted price from $900 to $750. And again, while this doesn't apply to all models in probably all regions, any 7900 XT that's priced much over $750 US should be ignored. And when compared to the GeForce competition, the absolute cheapest GeForce RTX 4070 Ti on Newegg right now costs $800, and you'd be mad to buy that over a discounted 7900 XT in my opinion. All said and done, it's a huge shame that AMD has stuffed up the 7900 XT release as badly as they have. Tim and myself recently talked at length about how poorly the Radeon division has been executing for years now, and although RDNA 3 fell short of performance targets, at the right price, it could have still been a huge success. That said, I think this generation was destined to fail anyway, and ultimately it failed because the cryptocurrency boom ended overnight, leaving AMD and Nvidia with massive silicon orders from TSMC and Samsung, and that of course led to a massive surplus of previous generation GPUs that gamers didn't really want, at least not without a hefty discount applied. But alternatively, had the cryptocurrency boom not ended when it did, this generation would have been even worse. So like I said, it was destined to fail either way. So while I believe AMD should have released the 7900 XT at $750 US from the get-go, or even lower than that potentially, that would have left them holding a massive bag of 6900 XT and 6950 XTs, a situation they absolutely didn't want to find themselves in. But even so, you have to wonder if making that sacrifice would have been worth it to claw back some market share from Nvidia. I certainly think that would have been the winning long-term strategy. It's really hard to say without some sort of crystal ball that can provide us with an alternate timeline where they did what I think they should have done. But really, there's a few things you can take away from here. Firstly, the 7900 XT, it was discounted so shortly after release that I'm not sure how much difference it would have made to 6900 series sales anyway. They probably could have started at $750 US, received much better reviews, like glowing reviews compared to what they did receive, and still cleared out the older RDNA 2 stock. And what we really do know is that this is yet another generation that's passed us by where the Radeon Group continues to tread through the waters of irrelevancy. And that is unfortunate for gamers everywhere. And on that bombshell, I am going to end this video. Hopefully you guys appreciated our sort of re-review of the 7900 XT. Much better product at $750 US. And of course, with those sort of driver related issues, pretty well sorted out. Yeah, just in general, much better product. Anyway, as I said, that is gonna, that's gonna end this one. If you'd like to support the channel more directly and get some cool perks in return, we do have Floatplane or Patreon. Signing up to either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server for members only, monthly live stream, uh, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.